Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Semper BB, also WrestlingObserver.com. We got a lot to get into here today on the program, not the least of which is last night's AEW Blood and Guts. If you did not see the show, let me tell you what happened there in the main event. They did a War Games match, and uh, it ended with Chris Jericho and MJF climbing up there on top of the cage. How they got there, I'm not entirely sure because it happened during a commercial break. That's another matter entirely. So they end up on top of the cage, and MJF and Jericho are brawling. They're trying to submit each other because it is submit or surrender at this point during the match, and neither can submit the other. And finally, MJF pulls out the diamond, diamond, dynamite, diamond ring or whatever it's called, and he puts it on his hand, and he punches Chris Jericho. And Jericho's bleeding all over the place, and MGF drags him over to the side of the cage. Now, if I do have one major complaint, it is that Excalibur should never have said that they were over concrete. Because they absolutely were not over concrete, and that actually made the bump through the stage worse, because it was very clear it was not concrete. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So... MGF threatens that he's going to throw Chris Jericho over the edge to his doom. And he yells down to the baby faces, if you don't surrender, I am going to kill Chris Jericho. I'm going to throw him off the side of this cage. So the baby faces are all in a panic and everything like that. And they look up and they don't know what to do. And finally, Sammy Guevara surrenders. He says, all right, all right, we give up. We surrender. Do not kill Chris Jericho. So the match ends. And the pinnacle has won blood and guts via surrender. So the match appears to be over, but then this MJF is such a despicable, horrible person, worse even than Don Callis, that he throws Jericho off the side of the cage anyway, and Jericho goes crashing through the through the stage below. He's done. And that's the end of the show. MJF celebrates. He's covered in blood. They've killed Chris... In. And this, so, that, and the other yeah. thing. So here's my takeaway from this. Actually, before I give my takeaway, Mike, do you have any comments on this match and the finish? I want to hear what you've got to say about this. Well, as far I, I thought the match itself was great, and we'll get into that. Um, I'm sure everybody wants to hear nitpicks that aren't nitpicks, I don't believe. Biggest thing for me, the, the biggest negative was, of course, the fall off of the cage. I mean, when you hype up that he's going to fall on concrete, nobody wanted him to fall on concrete. There seems to be this immediate knee-jerk response to anybody that thought it looked hokey or thought it looked lesser than compared to the rest of the match that, you know, hey, what did you want him to do, fall on concrete? No, but it, that didn't have to look so hokey or bad, and... Hopefully they learn from that, because it did look hokey and bad. The catch is, nothing that happened with Jericho falling affects, should, in my opinion, affect anything about the match, which was fantastic. I thought it was paced great. I thought FTR and Spears and uh, uh, Proud and Powerful and Sammy Guevara, I mean, they were the MVPs of that match. Sammy was arguably the MVP of the entire night. It was fantastic. Two things can be true. The visual of that looked awful, but the match itself was tremendous, and it moves everything forward, and I thought it was a great way to end things because no matter what you want to say about the Inner Circle, no matter what you want to say about Sammy, they are a family. They are a group of guys that, that, that are together, and would somebody have done that for MJF in the same way that Sammy did that for Jericho? Maybe they would have, but of course... The story they want to tell is that's how tight these guys are, and I thought that accomplished its role very well. I think there are some other picking of nits uh, throughout the match that you could point to if you really wanted to, but the overall feel of that match, the way the crowd was throughout the entire thing, to me, as hokey as it was, as terrible as it looked, as goofy as it was, and as un it wasn't needed to basically at the end of the day that that visual wasn't needed but 
especially Jericho hitting. You want to throw him off, that's fine. There are ways to film it where it didn't come off looking so bad at the end. But regardless of that, the match itself was awesome. The entire night, I thought, actually was was pretty damn awesome because I thought the first hour was damn good as well, too. All the focus is going to go to War Games. But again, two things can be too true. The match, I thought, was great. All right, here's my here's my my thoughts that I've got to get off right here. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because listen, if you don't like it and you're crying about it, just stop watching the show. What it what irritated me about this was people that went off and they said, "Oh my God, if WWE would have had such an obvious crash pad, you would have complained about it." Bro, listen, you know how many times WWE's used a crash pad? I mean, you can go back to the Monday Night Wars when Shane used to fall off stuff and go through crash pads, bro. Find one time there's a million examples where I ever complained about somebody falling and landing on a crash pad. It happens all the time. If you want to say that they could have shot it better, that's great. Fine. If you want to say that, that's fine. Whatever you want to say about, well, they could have made it look a little better or whatever. I have people going, well, you know, if, if you can't make it look good, you shouldn't do it. It's like, bro, if that's the rule... I can rattle off a list of matches and promos and angles and a million different things that shouldn't be done. If your if your requirement is if you can't make it look good, don't do it. They had an idea for the finish and they did what they could to keep Chris Jericho safe. I say the same thing about Shane McMahon. I say the same thing about anybody that takes a crazy bump. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. So this, yeah, but, yeah, eh, dude, just go watch another show and go listen to another show because nobody ever complains when WWE does it. If anything, I'm glad WWE puts a crash pad under the announce table to protect Shane McMahon. By the way, just a a note here. It wasn't even a crash pad. You know what Chris Jericho fell on last night? They put a bunch of cardboard boxes and they covered it with a ramp cardboard boxes bro if i'm on top of a cage and you tell me that i gotta bump off and go through like one of those big porta pits from gymnastics i do it in a heartbeat you tell me i'm gonna fall off that cage and land on cardboard boxes dude i ain't doing it so the guy's actually pretty ballsy for falling off on the cardboard boxes now if you think that they shot it poorly if you think they shouldn't have had the camera where they had the camera if you think they should have had a wide shot that's great but I had people last night going, you know what they should have done? They shouldn't even have shown him landing. I'm like, dude, if you would have fallen off that cage and you wouldn't even have showed him landing, you know how much people would have complained about it today? People saying, oh, it was as big a dud as when the bomb didn't go off. Listen, if you didn't like it, just don't watch Dynamite anymore. They did what they could. Maybe they could have shot the landing better, but they had an idea and they tried to keep the guy safe. They did the same thing they do for all other stunt work in movies where the guy fell on cardboard boxes. Was it perfect? No. (laughs) Was it as bad as when the bomb didn't go off? Dude, now you're being crazy. Didn't go off. That was a dud and it was a disaster. This was nothing like that. I agree with you. Please everybody. It was not a dud or a disaster. That's silly. But with that said, you can't go well. They use it in movies. They also don't show the the again. Yes, they yes. You can argue they could have shot it better. That is unquestioned. There there's a way they could have went about it where the visual. I'm sure they would change that again. But you can't fault anybody for pointing that out. Now, should it ruin their night? No. But I'm not inside anybody's head. And like I mentioned. There's a lot of people who are on the AEW side of the ledger just point out nothing can be, nothing's good enough when it comes to AEW and this type of nonsense. It's like, no, again, two things can be true. The match was great, but that looked like crap, okay? Not everything AEW does, AEW does is perfect. So there are people on the other side of that ledger, Brian, who are just as annoying, who are just as bad, who are just as completely ridiculous about all this stuff as the, as the same old WWE apologist. It's silly. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.